So DraftKings, it's actually down again pre-market. Now DraftKings just did release additional shares at fifty-two dollars about a week ago, and um, you know it's interesting. I actually almost bought some shares at fifty-two. Decided to wait. You know I've I've been in this for a while, so I got in it at uh, twenty-five. Bought more under thirty-five, around thirty-three. Um, right now it's actually down three, three 3.16% pre-market. It's trading at 43.17. Now, just kind of looking at this quickly. I mean, it could go two ways. I mean, obviously it could go multiple ways, but I think the two most, uh, potential, you know, situations that you're going to see with this stock is you're probably either going to bounce somewhere around where it's at and go higher or if it breaks that trend, you know, it, it actually it's in a megaphone kind of bearish top. So if you if you look at it and you break down the chart, it is in a megaphone. So it actually could go down below 40 into this, you know, probably 36 dollar range. Now, this is just some real quick, like two minutes. I just got home just kind of looking at a chart really fast. But, you know, this is dipping down. I think it's a buy anywhere in here. Obviously, it'd be a lot better if you got it below 40. <clears throat> but if I were if I were looking to buy this stock and I didn't own it already, I would be, you know, dollar cost averaging and probably dipping my toe in this first bucket here, and I'd probably be buying again in this bucket here. I actually own, you know, some shares of this, but I'm willing to buy a lot more, and I will probably if it goes lower, if it goes into this this range between 40 and $43, I'm probably going to buy some more. If it dips below 40, I'll probably go even heavier. So this is just, you know, quick chart, my two cents. Want to go back and look at, this is just at tra <clears throat> tradingview.com, excuse me. Let's look at some technicals really fast. So, you know, obviously you don't ever buy a stock just based on what it says, you know, what these meters to buy or sell. Sometimes it says strong buy and the next day it crashes, you know, but you want to look at things in, in combination. So you don't look at just one indicator by itself or one oscillator by itself, but you're gonna look at a bunch of different things and you're gonna make an educated decision. I also, you know, for this kind of stock, it would be a spec stock. I think it's one of the best spec type stocks that I, I could add to my portfolio. You know, I like these kind of plays, um, some of the cannabis plays, you know, Virgin Galactic, things like that are really good specs in my opinion. So when you look at this though, I mean, the relative strength index is 41.3. You know, obviously, yeah, it's neutral. If it goes, you know, in that 30 or below, it's kind of oversold. So it's not quite there, but it's getting it's getting pretty beat up considering it was the RSI was running hot. Anytime you see this RSI running over a 70, that's usually overbought, but it doesn't mean anything either. It can it can run at a, a 90 RSI for, you know, for days or, you know, 80, 80 RSI for days or weeks or I've seen it run for months. You know, looking at the uh, moving averages, you know, obviously it's it's still behaving pretty bearishly. That's why I'd be careful if I were buying it because it certainly could go lower. Um, the true technicals would tell you, honestly, like the true technicals on an average stock would tell you that this is probably going to go below forty dollars. The problem is when you look at this type of stock, it is more of a cult stock. It doesn't behave like a regular stock. It's it's very much a cult stock where. It kind of does its own thing. It doesn't always follow the rules exactly. Obviously, technicals still you know, work to a point. But with these kind of stocks, I generally will take it with a grain of salt. And sometimes I'll buy a little bit earlier just because these things can turn in a dime. You know, a stock like Tesla, I'm not necessarily comparing the two. But when you think of cult type stocks, the Robinhood traders and the retail traders like us, you know, we like buying these type of stocks because they're exciting. A lot of young people like buying these kind of stocks as they're exciting. It's something they understand. It's something they use. It's something they know. So, I mean, obviously, you know, DraftKings and Penn National, they've been on a tear. Both of them, in my opinion, are good long-term plays. But, you know, when you look at DraftKings, they have some really strong partnerships. For a while there, it seemed like every day it was something new with a new partnership. You know, Michael Jordan joined the board and so on. And I'm going to show you some slides that will show you. I, I think a lot of people don't understand completely what DraftKings does. They have an idea, but I don't truly think they understand the capabilities, the AI, all the stuff that's going on behind the hood. So we're gonna take a look at that here in a second. So the, the moving averages, 
you know, most of the short term ones, the five, the 10, the 30, even the 50 actually are all show and sell. Um, you know, the MACD, if you're using the 1216 as a sell, the momentum, <laughs> awesome oscillator if you're into that. You know, I, sometimes I like looking at the pivot points, the Fibonacci. I mean, you know, this is showing, you know, again in that 35, 50 range, but it also shows here 4138. So, you know, if I'm if I'm buying and I like using Fibonacci, I'm probably trying to buy, you know, pretty close to where it's at. It's for at forty two dollars and twenty seven cents. It might not get all the way this low. You know, if, if I really like this company long and I believe in it, I'd probably be, you know, dollar cost averaging around this range, knowing that it could go lower, if that makes sense. I think long term, there's still a lot of opportunity. You know, if you look at um, a yearly chart on this thing, I mean, it was up to sixty three dollars and seventy eight cents on October 2nd. A lot of us in the Patreon group were buying this, um, you know, at under thirty five dollars. Some of us even before that, but when it when it dipped down the last time, it got down I think 33, 34 in that range. A lot of people in the group were buying that pretty heavy, and then it ran all the way from that 33, 40, 30, 33 to 34 dollar mark to 63 dollars. So obviously, if you're trading, it would have been a great trade. You know, you're still up on it, but it's it's made a massive pullback from 63 to basically 43, a 20 dollar uh, haircut. That's pretty aggressive. I personally think this is a buying opportunity. Um, you know, there is no exact way to know exact, you know, exactly where this is going to go, because if you're using like the classic pivots, you know, 4239, well, you know, guess what? You're you're almost there already. Right. You know, but this is saying 2594. I don't believe it's going to go to 2594. And it's interesting that the classic S2 is the same as the Fibonacci S3 of 2594. Maybe it happens. I think that would be a really historic buying opportunity. I honestly think it stays in this range between, you know, thirty six dollars and you know, 40, $42 kind of where it's, it's trading pre-market. It's trading $43 and 13 cents pre-market. So that's, uh, that's just some quick technical analysis here today. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, you can. Okay. So this is an investor presentation. It's from January, but a lot of people probably haven't seen it. <clears throat> So this is an investor presentation from January 2020. A lot of people probably haven't seen it, though, and I just want to go through some of it. I, it does paint a really good picture of what's going on with this company. You know, obviously, um, some of this information has, has, in my opinion, improved um, since this, this point. I mean, obviously, um, you know, when they made it, when they made this presentation, it was before the pandemic. But, you know, and, and it, the pandemic has changed a lot of things. But when you look at what's on the slide deck, the information is still very relevant. So, you know, the, the Jason Robbins actually co-founded DraftKings back in 2011. And, um, you know, he's kind of serving as the, the CEO. And then if you remember, this was a SPAC through Diamond Eagle. And so Harry Sloan, he's the principal founder of Diamond Eagle. He's, you know, involved heavily. And then Jason Park, who's the CFO, um, you know, prior to DraftKings, Jason Park, he worked at Bain Capital as an operating partner and received an MBA from from Wharton School uh, in University of Michigan. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, our mission, we make life more exciting by responsibly creating the world's favorite real money games and betting experiences. A lot of people disassociate this with sports gambling and it's not completely that. And I wanna show you what I'm talking about. Our vision is to build the best, most trusted and most customer centric destination for skin in the game fans. To develop the most uh, innovative and entertaining real money gaming products and offers and to forever transform the manner in which people experience sports. So obviously sports is the theme, but there's, I'm going to show you in a minute here what I'm talking about. There's, there's some other opportunities. So when you look at, so number one here, massive global sports betting and iGaming opportunity, it says $7 billion in global sports book, TAM, which is total addressable market and expected us um, with iGaming total addressable market is $40 billion. Now, as of this morning, you know, if you look at DraftKings, the um, market cap is about $16.86 billion. So it's just under $17 billion. You know, obviously it's made a major haircut from where it was when it was in the 60s. Um, $16, 16 billion, $17 billion is, you know, that's a lot of money. It's obviously an expensive stock still, even at this range, but people are paying that premium for the opportunity for growth. And when you think of a lot of the states that are really beat down right now in terms of budgets and taxes, they're going to, you know, they're going to want 
to probably pass legislation. And there's, there's several states that are going to be voting here in a couple of weeks to get the legislation passed and get it rolling to, to, for some of these states to actually allow legal, legalized gambling. So right now it's, it's, it's only a handful of states, and that's going to continue to grow. I have friends that work in this industry. I talked to uh, one of them last night who actually worked in Las Vegas for a number of years. I talked to actually two different guys. One was a bookie for, um, for uh, MGM for a number of years. He was, he was basically a sports book manager there. And uh, he actually moved to the Midwest to start a new um, casino sports uh, bet in, in Iowa, which is actually just across the border um, near Sioux Falls. So basically, if you're familiar with that, that area, it's got Minnesota, uh, South Dakota, and Iowa and kind of in one little area. And he runs that sports book. It's brand new, brand new casino. Um, there's a lot of opportunity just like that. And talking to those guys, you get a lot of insight as to where this market could head over the next five and 10 years. And, you know, the more you dig into it, the more you talk to people that understand the opportunity, the more excited you get about a stock like DraftKings. Both of them will tell you that DraftKings and Penn National Gaming are both buys and that they're very different. You know, obviously Penn National Gaming has Barstool Sports now with that acquisitions, uh, with us, with that acquisition. And David Portnoy, Portno, you know, I, with him, you know, a lot of people like him. Some people don't, whatever. I mean, with Day Trader Dave. Um, but the reality is, is he's a major influencer and um, people do follow him and it is what it is, you know. So, that uh, that is going to continue to well. The difference with Penn is they have a lot of actual, you know, brick and mortar casinos. So it's very different in that as in that sense where DraftKings is, you know, basically digital and online. Um, so they're number one rated DFS and sportsbook platform, and DraftKings and SB Tech together. So they they work with SB Tech uh, together create a global vertically integrated powerhouse. It says twenty two U S and international licenses, hundred million dollars in cost synergies, attractive economic profile position for long-term profitability, um, currently public. And let's just go through some of this. So massive global market opportunity. You can see some of the states and in uh, different countries, actually. The regulated is uh, in the green over here on the, on the bottom left. And then uh, regulatory momentum just means that there's momentum that, you know, that laws will get passed where you can actually have legalized, regulated gambling. Um, so there's a lot of different countries, even India, which would be, you know, massive, of course, lots in South Africa, you know, Australia already is regulated. New Zealand's, you know, getting close, you know, most of South America is in the orange, uh, it looks like Canada. Um, it's actually interesting, Minnesota, South Dakota, Washington, uh, let's see, New Mexico, my geography lesson here, Florida, but you can kind of see the states and there's you know, states like Texas that are just grayed out, they're like, we're not interested, don't, <laughs> don't even talk to us about it. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. You know, North Dakota is actually gray as well, but it looks like there's regulatory momentum in South Dakota, Minnesota. So good stuff here. I mean, global gaming market, you got lotteries at 26%, casino at 35%. Sports betting is only 16%, and that's why this is important to, to understand what DraftKings is doing outside of just sports betting, right? So you look at the implied U.S. market, New Jersey, and if you watch the bets, I've got a, a video on on the channel on the Fired Up Wealth uh, YouTube channel. That's uh, bets B E T Z, which is uh, basically an ETF for uh, for for sports betting and gaming, and um, you know it has it has stocks like DraftKings and like Penn, and um, there's there's a bunch of them in there. But you know, it's this is kind of showing you the implied U.S. market, the U.K. market. The Australian market, um, I think there's some really good information in here. So here's kind of the, some of the states. It shows following the repeal of the Professional and Amateur, Amateur Sports Protection Act in May of 2018, 21 states re representing 36% of the U.S. population have legalized sports betting in some form. And it says retail, mobile, or both. 14 states have legalized online sports betting, which is about 24% of the U.S. population. So you can see there's a whole three quarters of the U S population that don't even have access, you know, legally right now in terms of online sports betting legally, nine States are currently live, which represents only 13% of the U S population. And we're not even talking, talking global population. We're just talking about the United States DraftKings, including SB tech is live in only six States representing only 11% of the U S population. You can see New Jersey, um, is one that's legalized and online 
all the ones in the top here. So New Jersey, West Virginia, Indiana, Oregon, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Nevada, Rhode Island, Iowa. I was just mentioning Iowa with my buddy. That's why he moved to Iowa to start that new uh, sports betting book. Tennessee, Washington, D.C., Illinois, Colorado, Michigan. Uh, and then there's some states like Delaware, Mississippi, New Mexico, Montana, Arkansas, New York, and North Carolina that have it legalized but not necessarily online or online lo- you know, live. Um, and you can see some of the yellow on over here are some of these states like Tennessee. And uh, from Tennessee basically down to Michigan, it's yellow, meaning it's pending launch for online live. Um, so USI Gaming, this is, this is the part that I really want to drive home for anybody that's considering investing in DraftKings. The reason we're covering DraftKings this morning, this is, this is a live stream that we do on the Patreon um, you know, Discord channel. So for Elite and VIP, um, this session is being recorded right now. And if you're watching this, um, this is the kind of stuff that we cover in the mornings. I'm covering this for our group because a lot of people are interested in the stock and potentially buying it. So I'm going to give, you know, like I did earlier, a little bit of technical information to give you some insight to what I'm thinking and then some fundamentals of why the stock could, could move higher as a long-term investment. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you when to buy, how to buy, what to buy, when to sell. All I'm doing is providing information and hopefully it's helpful for you so you can make your own educated decision. The U.S. iGaming is the next wave, though, and it's nearly half a billion dollars uh, industry in New Jersey. And growth has accelerated since the introduction of OSB in August of 2018. And remember, this is from January of 2020, and this is just going to continue to accelerate, especially as more states you know, start to legalize uh, and expand. Based on New Jersey, we estimate the U.S. iGaming opportunity to be approximately $21 billion. Okay, So if you look at, this is just New Jersey, look at 2014. It was 123 on there in millions. And then, you know, in five years, it went from 123 million to 452 million. And the U.S. market implied is 21 billion. Obviously, you, know, you got to take that with a grain of salt because, you know, we don't ever know. That's kind of speculation. And that's why this stock is in my spec bucket. If you don't know what that means, go check out the channel. It shows you how to invest in spec stocks. You know, you don't go all in on these stocks, but this is a very exciting and I think a high quality spec play. Um, I, I can't, I honestly can't tell you if I've been more excited about uh, many other companies. You know, Fastly, I was really excited about back in 2019. I really think this, this in a few years is going to be worth a lot more. And maybe I'm wrong, um, but it, it sure seems like it the more I dig into it. So uh, the U.S. OSB and iGaming opportunity, this is saying a $40 billion TAM or total addressable market. So $18 billion implied U.S. total market times 65% of U.S. population with legalized OSB, times 20 to 30% of market shares, what they're saying, equals you know, two, two to, to $3 billion in gross OSB you know, revenue. And you say, well, wait a minute, there's $17 billion, so you know, what's going on? Well, stay tuned. We'll, we'll cover some more here. Um, so here's the iGaming trajectory. Implied total U.S. market is $21 billion, same kind of deal. You do the math. And they've got $600 million to $1.2 billion in gross iGaming um, revenue. So DraftKings, what's their advantage? The strong relationships. And we mentioned the partnerships in the beginning. You know, there's a ton of great partnerships. You've got Michael Jordan on the board. It seems like every day they're announcing more and more. Um, back when this was printed or produced, um, they had 4 million DFS paid users. I talked to a buddy of mine that has used this for a couple of years. And I'm going to get to this in a second about AI, artificial intelligence. Just hold on. So question asked, what do you think about brands? This is always important when you're talking about moats because you're like, well, what's the differentiator? There's a million companies that do this. Well, it kind of comes back when you talk to Zillow and Redfin and Open Door, you know, and, and those type of companies are like, I like Zillow group because it has that brand recognition, right? And DraftKings, it doesn't have nearly as much brand recognition as Zillow compared to and that. And there's more competition in this space. But DraftKings has 22% of the first brand that comes in the mind. And you think of, you know, FanDuel's second at 13%. But look at like Yahoo and ESPN. You think ESPN would be a lot higher. Disney owns ESPN. It's only 2%. CBS is only 1%. I mean, I actually think 22% is pretty impressive in a you know, pretty saturated market overall. So they, at, at the time of this, um, that this was created, they had 4 million unique paid users in their database. They have this DraftKings Daily Fantasy. They also do Sportsbook. 
it talks about, you know, there's a ton of information on here, but so to success in online sports betting, it talks about um, basically the market share in different states. So you look at New Jersey, they've got 31% of the market share. West Virginia, 65% versus FanDuel, 35. Indiana has 67% and Oregon is 100%, um, which is kind of interesting. And I wonder if that's changed at all since, you know, this was, this was created, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll post this in the video link and you can go take a look at it. But what I wanted to talk about primarily here is, so there's a company overview kind of running short on time here, but there's a ton of information in here. It talks about its offices. Um, this is actually really, really cool too. So DraftKings plus SB tech. So it actually gives them access to things like Churchill downs. If you're familiar with horse, you know, horse, uh, betting, uh, golden nugget casinos, Virgin bet, which uh, a lot of people probably don't even know anything about version bet. And then there's a bunch of lottery, you know, like the Oregon lottery and a couple other ones in there, but, and they also have a retail sports book. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's a little bit of diversity when it comes to that. Um, I'm just going to go through this and show you there's tons of information in here. So basically what I was going to talk to you about today, um, and it's, it's in a different slide but essentially they, they use AI and I can just, I can speak to this in, in terms of just experience with a buddy of mine that actually used this for two years. So they have artificial intelligence and what the artificial intelligence does is it basically, you know, collects data on each user and it will promote certain events that the AI thinks the user is going to, you know, gamble on. And it's actually kind of sad. So like, People with a moral compass might not like a company like this because they, you know, they think of like gambling and can destroy people's lives. And, you know, I'm all for responsible gambling for fun, you know, money you can afford to lose, not like, you know, mortgaging your house or anything like that. Most people I know that gamble on sites like this are doing, you know, a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, but they've got the money to lose and they have fun doing it. And it's just a fun kind of hobby, but it can be really dangerous. And the AI actually, as an investor, it's exciting as someone that's afraid of a gambling addiction, you might, you know, hate the idea, but the AI essentially, he said that he would just play it all the time and constantly spend more just because it was fun. And because they always had the right thing, you know, promoted to him either on the app or through an email saying, Hey, you should try this, you know, weekly pick. And you, you know, they've got, they've got machines that machine learning that, you know, essentially these machines run these, uh, these sweep st stakes and these different, um, you know, campaigns and things like that. So you're actually betting on certain circumstances for like weekly games for NFL, or there's a million different things out there, but essentially you can win like a million dollar pot and it sounds really exciting, but they, you know, if you look at the, the amount of revenue they earn off that million dollar payoff, they're doing really, really well in terms of percentage. So, um, you know, it's kind of like Vegas and casinos there. I mean, the house kind of always wins it's the same deal here. Um, you know, you definitely don't gamble, uh, in things like DraftKings to try to, you know, it's not an investment, it's a gamble, you know what I mean? And people try to compare, you know, sports betting to stocks. It's not the same thing in my opinion at all. I mean, with stocks, you have, um, you've got a lot of education on your side. The fact that, you know, generally if you're investing in high quality companies, they'll appreciate over time with gambling. It's just YOLO, you win or you lose. And a lot of options traders do the same thing. Like they just do calls and puts, and it's kind of like, you know, either this team wins by this amount of points or they don't and you, you win or you lose. But they do a lot more than that. And, and this is kind of what I wanted to show you here. You know, they've got things like blackjack, jack, roulette, video poker, slot machines. So it's not just sports betting. You know, DraftKings actually, if you if I kind of zoom in on this, uh, I can't zoom in on it. But you can see right here, DraftKings, blackjack, they have a live dealer, they have table games, they have slot machines, blackjack, roulette, video poker. All this is online. And so, you know, a lot of people disassociate it with fantasy football because that's what they're kind of known for. That's how they really got their reputation, fantasy football and sports betting on different games, especially NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL, whatever you're into. But they do a lot more than just that. And they even have games that are integrated. Um, you can go look on their website where you can play like roulette and it's like basketball integrated with roulette. So you have to shoot a basketball. The basketball goes in the hoop and then it goes on the roulette wheel and spins and just really cool stuff like that. And you can explore around. Um, but anyway, we're, we're short on time here. So, um, if you're in the Patreon group watching this live in the live stream, if you have questions, I can answer them later on. We've got four minutes to opening bell. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you're interested in more, um, 
you know, check out Patreon. Just go to Google, type in Patreon plus Fired Up Wealth. You know, check out the different tiers. This is the kind of stuff we do on our daily live streams for the elite and the VIP. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.